What's up space fans, my name is Urban Venture and today we are back with part 3 of our Cal Controller tutorial. So we've gone over the basics of how to program a sequence in a Cal Controller, turning things on and off at certain times, and then we expanded that to look at robotics and how we might move robotics uh, using the Cal Controller to get them to deploy at certain directions at certain times. Now I'm going to show you the third main reason to use a Cal Controller, which is to control things like thrust limiters to allow you to balance the thrust of your vehicles and even create custom RC Yes, block. So let's have a look at that now. If we load up the example here called the MUN Hovercraft, again this is available in the description below the video, a link to downloading it. Um, so here it is, it's a little craft designed to hover around the MUN with a kerbal on top and uh, basically all it consists of is a central kind of block using that rover platform and then four ant engines at the bottom with their fuel tanks and then along the top or around the top you've got these uh, radial ants that are going to be our RCS engines. So first of all we're going to look at just controlling things using the bottom ones and then we're going to move on to making custom RCS blocks and getting even more control out of the top ones. Um, so the other thing with this vehicle is I've given you a bunch of cow controllers already mounted on the outside that if the save has uh, worked correctly should be um, pre-named to their relevant control point and so basically we can start off by controlling pitch so at the moment if I turn on all four engines there at the bottom and uh, throttle up obviously the vehicle will start to hover or take off uh, what we want to be able to do is turn off two engines at the front to pitch forward and then turn off two engines at the back to pitch back so to do that let's start by selecting the pitch cow controller and then assigning the thrust limiter of every engine to that cow controller so we want four thrust limiters for the four engines one for each there we go and then we can open up right click on the cow controller I'm gonna leave this on screen just to help out uh, bring up the editor here and then just put it below so that you can still see the engines in question and now what we want to do is we want to put the playhead at the 2.5 second mark there we go and then select the first engine at the top place a pin here and put that to 100% and then the first pin here as well that can go to 100 and now what that's basically doing is when we're at the middle of the sequence or at the start of the sequence the engine is working at full thrust and then as we go towards the end of the sequence the engine will throttle down it will be limited to the point where it switches off so that's great just check which engine this is I think it's the front right cool and then we also want to go ahead and do the same to the engine across from it so we can actually copy this here let's just make sure by the way before we do that this is definitely in the middle so yeah your middle point needs to be at 2.5 go ahead and copy that to the engine that's also at the front so front two engines now have this setting and then for the back engine we want the opposite to happen and what's great is we can actually copy this the exact same way and then using this mirror tool this is the horizontal mirror tool we end up with a reverse sequence and do the same either pasting it first or copying the mirrored one and then pasting that so just to go over it basically what we've got is a sequence where if we play it in this direction we end up with two engines at the front switching off and the vehicle pitching forward and if we play it in this direction we end up with the opposite happening the two engines at the back switch off and the vehicle pitches up. Okay so now we've programmed the sequence with the values we want we're going to go ahead and tell the game how to control that sequence so for this I'm obviously controlling pitch so I want to use the axis related to pitch which is W and S so click on pitch up here and then click on your cow controller make sure you've got the right one click on play position add that in and now basically our W and S key will control whether or not the sequence plays forward or backwards and then that should be good enough so let's go and test that. So we've loaded in with the vehicle held up on the pad. Let's go ahead and test out the sequence. So first things first, using spacebar to turn the engines on. There we go. And now if I hold the W key, we should see some of the engines start to throttle down. There we are. And then if I hold the S key, we should see them all throttle back up. And then the front ones should throttle down. Nice. So that's doing the basics of pitch control. It's a little bit slow, um, but just to show you what's going on, if I open up the editor here, this is it. As I play through the sequence, the playhead moves back and forth and that corresponds to the engines. So we end up being able to return to the middle if we want all the engines firing and then move from one end to the other. At the moment mine happens to be backwards as well so I just need to flip something. Um, but one thing you might find, let me, uh, let me see if I can hack gravity and show you in flight here. So if I uh, put our gravity down, just hack the gravity and put it down to like 10%, something around there. And then we'll let the vehicle take off. There we go, I accidentally turned on a bunch of other engines, but it doesn't matter. So now that the vehicle's hovering, watch what happens when I try and pitch forward and backwards. It's quite slow, it doesn't really have a good amount of response. And over time it'll be hard for me to counter it because it takes so long. So before it crashes I'm just going to quickly show you what you can do. You can change the settings 
Uh, so you go to pitch here. At the moment it's set to incremental, which means that you're slowly moving the value up and then slowly moving it down. But what I want, like I said, is something much more responsive. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it to absolute. And then uh, you notice me say as well, mine was uh, inverted, my, my controls were backwards. So I'll flip that there. And now what will happen is when I'm not pressing anything, the sequence should return to put the playhead in the middle so that all engines are firing. And then when I press W or S, it should turn half off. When I let go of that button, it should turn them all back on again. So let's see that here. There we are, look, playhead is now in the middle. Now if I try and pitch backwards, there we go. And the minute I let go, the vehicle should be controlled, much more controllable. So yeah, basically what happens now is the playhead always sits in the middle of the sequence. As I hit W, it goes to one end. When I let go, it goes back to the middle. Then I hit the opposite key, the S key, and it goes the opposite way. So this is probably what you want more for your vehicles. And at the moment, it's switching off two engines entirely and leaving two switched on. So that's good. We can go back to the VAB and try and, uh, and, try and look at roll as well. Okay, so we're back in the VOB. I've quickly just switched these to the settings that I found work better out on the uh, on the test stand. Now let's look at also programming roll. So this one is good for you to try yourself. So it's exactly the same as what we just did for pitch. The only difference is now we're not going to fire the front engines and the back engines. We're going to do the left engines and the right engines. I'm going to quickly fast forward through me programming this um, and then I'm going to show you what difference that makes. So now we've got exactly the same thing. We've got the uh, the point here in the middle of the sequence where all engines are on the same exact value. And then uh, we're gonna go and do what we did last time in flight mode where I'm gonna set up the cow control itself. There we are, that should be the roll one. No, it's this one here. There we go. And then I'm gonna change it from incremental to absolute so that it returns to the middle every time. And that when I let go of all the buttons, it's firing all the engines and then uh, we'll go and check that out. So like I say, try and do that one yourself. I've gone through it a bit quicker. Try and see if you can get that one programmed on your own. It should be exactly the same, just different engines. And then I'll show you the only difference when you have two cow controllers working side by side for this. All right, so we're now out on the pad again. Let's start the engines up, throttle up to maximum, and then see what happens. There we go. So as I'm hitting the Q key, the vehicle is throttling down two engines. And then as I hit the E key, it does the same on the opposite side and W and S are still working. Now you'll notice a difference straight away, which is because we've got two cow controllers with two limiting values. So one of the cow controllers here is telling the engines to remain at 100%, while the other one is telling them to go to zero. So what happens is the engines just go to 50%. So um, this isn't a huge problem. In fact, a lot of the time you probably don't wanna cut two pairs of engines when you're trying to control. Um, so the fact that it goes to 50% thrust is fine. But you can see that here, watch the engine here. So unless I'm doing W and E at the same time, that engine won't cut out. Um, but yeah, just bear that in mind. If you've got two cow controllers taking care of thrust limiting, um, you'll only get half as responsiveness out of them. So they'll go to 50% rather than zero or 25 rather than uh, 50, that kind of thing. So just bear that in mind. And now we've done the main thrust balancing there with the engines. I'm going to show you how to do the RCS. I'm going to show you how to program your, and then you can have a go at programming all the other ones yourself after that. So let's go back to the VAB. So we just managed to program there the ability to turn off certain engines or turn down the thrust of certain engines in order to allow us to actually roll and pitch the vehicle uh, and get control just by using engines that don't have any gimbals. Um, for the next bit, what I'm going to do is set up some of these top engines here to allow us to yaw. So at the moment, just using the bottom engines, we can't cr create any sort of yaw control. Um, but this is where we're going to start learning about custom RCS blocks. I'm going to go ahead and set up yaw um, with you. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I'm going to give you the task of trying to see if you can set up all the other ones so that these ones at the back here work with H and N and all of the other keys. Um, but yeah, I'll show you how to do your. To get this to work, we're gonna need to turn on the advanced tweakable option. So if you play with advanced tweakables turned on in the settings, that's fine. But yeah, we do need that for the uh, for the tutorial here. So uh, I'm gonna back out and go and show you how to turn that on. To turn on advanced tweakables, you just need to go to the main menu here, click on settings, and then have a look in this section here. You should see advanced tweakables written there. Just click that on and hit accept. And now you have access to more complicated stuff in the build. So obviously, if you're not keen to get this uh, technical with your vehicles, feel free to move on. But uh, just in case you want to see how to do something like this, uh, I'll give you a demonstration now. Okay, so now that we're back in the VAB with that advanced tweakables turned on, you should see straight away that you've got access to more uh, 
options here when you right click on parts the main thing we want is this setting here so where it says throttle at the moment it says main throttle which means that as I'm using shift and control these engines are going to turn on and off obviously that's not how we want our RCS to work because we want it to work independently of the main throttle so that's what we're going to do we're going to change this to independent and then max it out so you can go ahead and do that for every single engine I'm going to fast forward through this really quickly here Okay, so once you've set up all your engines like this with the independent throttle maxed out and the thrust limiter at zero, you can go ahead and start programming. So this can be very similar to before. We're going to open up the your one this time, so it should be blank for you. I'm going to pin this in the corner. Once again, we can put the playhead directly in the middle of the sequence at 2.5 seconds. And then we go into action groups and we select uh, the your cow. There it is. And then make sure that we put every single engine's thrust limiter on this. So this is going to be very similar as before, all four here. These are the ones we want, by the way, these these two and then the two there. You can use other ones for your, but I'm going to go with these ones first. So there you are, all four thrust limiters added. And now the only difference this time compared to the last time is we're going to put that pin in the middle like so. Make sure it's at 2.5 seconds, but then rather than leaving the engine constantly at 100% thrust limiter, we're actually going to put it constantly at zero. So that means that when we're not using it, the engine is just switched off and then we're gonna make the value here at the end of the sequence 100. So what happens is the engine, when we're sat in the middle of the sequence, is not firing at all. The minute I hit D or A on the keyboard, we'll see the thrust increase. The minute I let go, it will decrease, right? And so we've got that set up on one engine. Now we just need to make sure we add that to the other correct one. So this engine here is already programmed. We need to make sure that corresponds to this engine at the back here, like so. Uh, obviously, depending on the order that you clicked on yours, it might be different. But just make sure that you have these two on the same settings and then these two on the same settings. So I've left two there. Let's paste this and then horizontally flip it. And yeah, like I say, it will be different depending on which order you clicked on them. But yeah, you should end up with this one here and this one here. Uh, it's hard to see actually uh, and then this one here and this one here so basically the two corners should be the same okay so now we programmed it that's exactly the same as before we're going to go ahead and click on pitch here we're going to go ahead and click on your here and then we're going to find the your cow controller and hit play position just like before i want to control this one with absolute thrust so that when i let go of the button it returns to um to zero so let's do that absolute um, we'll see if we need to invert it you can work that out beforehand but i just like to flip it uh, once i've seen how it works and then the only difference this time is i want the ability to control those engines not using the uh, space bar to turn them on and off but different buttons so it makes sense if they're meant to be rcs engines that we put them on the rcs group i think i've already done that on the uh on the example build but yeah any engines like this that you don't want to be using for anything but rcs put them in to toggle on the rcs action group by clicking rcs and then click on the engine and hitting toggle adding that in so let's go and see how that works Okay, so here we are again with the vehicle on the launch clamp. Let's turn on our main engines, check they're still working first. So if we throttle up, everything's good there. And we can increase our thrust limiter, like I say, 50% on those now because we've got two things. So we can also roll and pitch and then we can turn off an engine like that. And now let's see if I cut those for a minute, let's see how the, uh, the yaw is working. So I'm going to hit RCS here. That's all our engines turning on. And then with A and D, we should see, there we go, these two working independently of one another. And like I say, this is exactly like RCS when it comes to monopropellant. I can turn these on and off with the RCS key. So there we are, look, nothing happens. The minute I hit RCS, they all turn on again, which is great. Um, so yeah, let's try out flying it. Release it, throttle up, and there it is, taking flight. We're able to pitch forward now. We're able to pitch back. We're able to yaw. And so there you go, we have full control of this vehicle just using engines in different combinations to turn the vehicle around and uh, like I say we can pitch up pitch down your and so that's the basics of how you might use a cow controller to program things like engines the same can work with SRBs you can actually use a cow controller to throttle SRBs up and down using a bunch of different keys if you want to try that as well um, but my challenge for you to finish off this video is see if you can go ahead and program all of these engines here to work with the other RCS controls so like I say I left a bunch of cow controllers on the back of this and uh, try and link them to the JK I and L commands which you should find here um, so you should be able to program the uh, vehicle to use forward backwards left right and up and down which is J and L K and I and then H and N see if you can get that working I'm going to show you a clip of mine working on the MUN with Jebediah and then that should be a good way of practicing on your own programming some of the more complicated stuff and really checking that you've got a hang of it so have a go at that
Alright then, so here's the finished version of the craft currently flying Jebediah over the surface of the Mun. One thing you might notice when you've got your vehicle finished is that unlike the regular stock RCS ports, these custom ones don't combine with SAS. So you'll notice for example that even with SAS turned on, the engines won't counter your motion and keep you stable like the stock ones would. So just bear that in mind if you're going to use these kind of custom RCS blocks on your vehicle. I've found the best way to use them is for your docking engines, so like your lateral burns up down left right and then uh, maybe if you've got a large scale vehicle you use custom RCS blocks for the heavier translation burns or reorienting and then maybe use the stock ones just to keep your vehicle stable or even just combine them with uh, a good amount of SAS to hold your vehicle still and so please do show me what you end up building as well with what you've learned over these cow controller tutorials I'd love to see your crafts I'll give you a link to my discord on screen at the moment and then uh, you can go ahead and share some pictures there but yeah I'd really love to see what you guys are building but with that we have come to the the end of the complete guide to the cow controller so hopefully you're able to keep up i know it's quite a, a lot of information to take on board and if you're struggling please do feel free to uh, message me either in the comments below or uh, find me on twitch when i'm streaming and i'll do everything i can to uh, to try and help you out and if there's anything else you would like to see a tutorial for whether or not it's a specific type of use for the cow controller or a craft it doesn't have to be cow controller related please leave me a suggestion in the comments and i'll uh, i'll do my best to uh, put something together this was really fun to make so uh, i'd love to do more and if you're interested in seeing how I'm using these techniques and others to complete my final playthrough of KSP, please do stop by my Twitch channel. I'm live 2pm till 6pm UK time most days of the week, so feel free to stop by and say hi. But yeah, thanks again for watching and good luck out there.